Hello everyone and welcome to three wow and one promise in the AI world. Today we're going to make a thrilling journey to the early 2010s. A time when artificial intelligence was on the cusp of the revolution. It was just a glimpse of the scale that became possible 15 years later. We will explore three pivotal moments that shape AI as we know it today, featuring visionaries that I've been following for years. Jensen Huang, Fei Fei Li, and Demis Hassabis. You know, it's really, really hard to get interviews with top AI CEOs and researchers these days, especially the famous ones. Some of them travel like rock stars with conference agents and speaker tour rides and the whole agencies behind that. And they ask for a lot of money to show up some of them, crazy times. But today I'm going to show you the other times, the times when the current rock stars were much more available, the times when Jensen Huang did not yet have his leather jacket. My goal here is simple. First, to look at these brilliant, young, excited people, excited about what they were building 15 years ago, and they still are excited about now. But also, I want to show you this long, relentless continuity of their work. When people say, next year it all will be solved, super intelligence will be here, AGI will be here, just watch these clips. These folks were talking about the same core ideas decades ago. There is a lot of energy in the field, there is a lot of vision, and even after 50 years, so much is still unsolved. We have a long and exciting road ahead of us. And to the first wow. Jensen Huang and the GPU revolution. Our first wow moment takes us to 2009, where Jensen Huang, CEO of NVIDIA, was igniting a revolution in computing. At NVIDIA's very first GPU technology conference, now famous as GTC, Jensen introduced a game-changing idea using GPUs, graphics, processing units, not just for gaming, but for general purpose computing. That was huge. This is the first conference for a GPU developer. Never in the history of the computer industry has there been a developer's conference for programming GPUs. And look how large it is. Jensen's vision was bold. He explained how GPUs powered by NVIDIA's CUDA platform could handle massive parallel computations, perfect for tasks like machine learning and AI. In his talk, he breaks it down with what he jokingly calls CEO math. Suppose over time, I gained access to 10 times the number of transistors as my first column with one CPU board. And I'm gonna use those 10 times of transistors in parallel cores, 500 parallel cores, where each of these little tiny parallel cores is equivalent to one very, very well-designed CPU board. Okay? So one CPU core equals 50, and I have 10 times more transistors, and so there's 500 parallel cores. Now, that little tiny parallel core has a deficiency. That little tiny parallel core is deficient in the way that when it runs serial code, because it doesn't benefit from all of the speculative execution technology that has been incorporated into today's modern, exquisitely designed CPUs, it runs serial code badly. It runs serial code badly. So let me make it five times more badly. And so that one second becomes five. But for parallel code, it's very easy for the parallel processor to itself. And let's say that I simply accelerate that five more times. And so if you simply do this math, what you'll discover is that the parallel application is in fact 40 times faster. This shift to parallel computing was a game changer. Jensen showed that combining one powerful CPU with hundreds of GPU cores could speed up parallel tasks like AI algorithms, by nearly 200 times at that moment, without slowing down traditional problems. We saw a speed up. What's amazing is we saw a speed up here for the parallel application of nearly 200 times, between 100 and 200 times, an enormous speed up. And yet, on mostly sequential, sequential programs, it did no harm. It did no harm. And so, the most important thing in creating a new architecture is to make sure, number one, it does no harm. 
that everything that you used to run runs better. But for new applications, it has an enormous opportunity to take you to a new space. And now over time, more and more people will realize this architecture exists, and they will adapt their applications to take advantage of all the resources inside your computer, eliminating more and more and more of the sequential dependencies inside your program. As a result, speed ups will continue to enhance. That is the essence of heterogeneous computing. And then, the big reveal, the Fermi GPU, a supercomputer with the soul of a GPU. At that moment, everything was just so new. This whole conference was solely for developers who were working on GPUs, and it gained enormous success. NVIDIA did not expect 1,500 developers to show up. They had to close the registration two weeks before the event. That was crazy. Fermi is a miserly 3 billion transistors. Um, it is an absolute, uh, absolute powerhouse. And we call it a supercomputer with a soul of a GPU. Instead of a GPU that has been extended for general purpose computing, we took a massive investment, a massive risk company, to start from the ground up a brand new architecture which is designed to be a computer first. However, to treat computer graphics and parallel computing as equal citizens. Fermi, with its 3 billion transistors, was designed for both graphics and AI workloads, setting the stage for the deep learning boom. This was the moment GPUs became the backbone of modern AI, and Jensen Huang saw it coming so many years ago. The second wow is about the godmother of AI, Fei Fei Li, and ImageNet moment. So let's zoom to Stanford University, where Dr. Fei Fei Li was tackling a different challenge, teaching computers to see. In the mid-20s, Fei Fei was pioneering computer vision, a field she described as making computers understand images like humans do. Indeed, I'm going to share with you some of the um, exciting research and uh, just the field of computer vision uh, in general. So let me ask you a question. How many of you think you know what the word uh, artificial intelligence means? Raise your hand. Great. OK. Don't worry if you don't. Here's a crash course for you. I hope you've seen the movie WALL-E. And uh, I just took excerpts from WALL-E and show you that if you were a scientist designing WALL-E, you, you're likely to be an artificial intelligence researcher, and you'll be um, empowering WALL-E with all kinds of functionalities. Her big wow moment? ImageNet, a massive database of labeled images that became the fuel for training AI to recognize objects. She came up with the idea in 2006. At that moment, that was a completely crazy idea. No one believed in it. But her team showed computers thousands of photos, teaching them to identify everything from starfish to a cat. A computer knows what is the event, is a rowing event, where it's taking place. The computer tells you it's a lake. And who are the objects involved? In this, uh, in this picture, and the computer would uh, label their trees, athletes, rowing boat, and water. So this is automatically generated by our um, computer vision algorithm. By 2012, ImageNet powered a breakthrough when a GPU-trained neural network, AlexNet, crushed the ImageNet competition, recognizing objects with unprecedented accuracy. This was the spark that ignited deep learning, and it wouldn't have happened without Fei Fei Li's vision and those GPUs Jensen Huang was championing. So I'm very proud to report that at Stanford Vision Lab, we are the, one, the first one to have ever built a visual recognition algorithm that recognizes more than 20,000 object classes. Even Google doesn't have it. Fei Fei's work showed that with enough data and computing power, computers could start to see the world like we do, paving the way for self-driving cars, facial recognition, robots talking to you and seeing you, and other artificial intelligence things. Our final wow moment takes us to London, where a young Demis Hassabis was dreaming big, huge, enormously huge. 
It was 2010 when he founded DeepMind, a company focused on artificial general intelligence, AGI, what he described as machines that can think like humans. At the Singularity Summit, Demis shared his unique approach combining neuroscience with AI. Although I'm making the case for systems neuroscience, what I'm really advocating is a hybrid approach, which is that we want to combine the best of machine learning has to offer and systems neuroscience. So I think I can make this most clear by saying, where we know how to build a component for an AGI system, let's use the state of the art algorithms. Let's just take those, the best of breed. So whether that's reinforced learning or hierarchical neural networks. Where we don't know how to build a component, then we should continue to push machine learning algorithms as far as we can. But also, it makes sense in parallel to look at systems neuroscience for ideas for potential solutions. So to do this in parallel, not one or the other. Demis argued that to build AGI, we should look to the human brain. He highlighted how neuroscience could inspire new algorithms, like those mimicking the brain's visual system on navigation cells. In 2010, just think about it, when others focused on narrow AI, weak AI, Demis was already chasing the holy grail of AGI. He talks about AGI, he calls it AGI. It was five years before OpenAI was even thought of. Isn't that crazy? DeepMind's early work laid the foundation for later triumphs like AlphaGo, which beat the world's best Go player in 2016 and blew everyone's mind. Demis's vision from 2010, and probably he thought about it much earlier, it shows that AGI was never a sci-fi to him. It was a real possibility. And if we think who will be able to achieve AGI, my bet would be on Demis's eyes. There you have it, three wow moments that define AI in the early 2010s. Jensen Huang gave us the GPU horsepower. Dr. Fei-Fei Li taught computers to see with ImageNet, which sparked AlexNet and the whole deep learning movement. And Demis Hassabis set the sights on AGI with DeepMind, that later became Google Deep. Together, they laid the foundation for the AI revolution we're living in today. I'm excited. I am inspired by these people. They've been relentlessly working on their vision for decades, and they made it happen for all of us. But AI world would not be possible without many, 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 many promising categories and companies and concepts that failed. And today, in the category one promise is NVIDIA that completely failed. If up to all the customers, industry analysts, other companies in the computer industry, NVIDIA shouldn't even be here today. We were already dead last among many. The world surely didn't need yet another PC graphics company, and the space was littered with tens of competitors leapfrogging each other every month. All of the conventional wisdom was true historically but we believed completely irrelevant to the future that we saw. We believed that computer graphics was to become a massive opportunity as computing devices and displays proliferate everywhere and surround us. That the visual experience will become central to how we use computers. That generating realistic images on a computer was incredibly hard and offered years of innovation. And that great graphics will come to define future computers. We were young, naive, idealistic. We didn't know what we didn't know about building the industry and about building our company. We didn't know that it was impossible. We just imagined how great it would be if computers would do what we imagined. Our fresh and innocent perspective, unencumbered by conventional wisdom, allows the, allowed us to see what 30, 40, 50 other companies could not and did not. To this day, we challenge conventional wisdom with the same innocence. I wish you my third wish, to see the world like a child. Thanks for joining us today for this historical episode of Free Wow and One Promise. Please share this episode with your friends and everyone else and subscribe to this channel. I will be very grateful. It's a very unconventional and very human way to look at artificial intelligence. Thank you.